any inquisitive person should be asking themselves why a seemingly uh, anti-establishment candidate like Donald Trump could be allowed to become the U.S. president. The simplest answer is that he isn't anti-establishment and is only affronting a very convincing facade for public consumption. The family-made rich man has been strategically propped up as the all incommodating GOP extremist opponent for candidate Hillary Rodham Clinton herself of the very same establishment and even personal friend of Trump, at least until uh, prior to the race. The two candidates come from the same organized crime syndicate that leads back to Israel. It's murderous Mossad terrorist organizations and the Lansky International Crime Syndicate. Furthermore, as we shall see, Trump is nothing more than a puppet for the Mossad and is likely under their control through opportunism and, darker yet, blackmail. What Trump and his cronies all share in common is sexual compromise and their loyalty to the international Judeo-Masonic power structure. A former Israeli Mossad officer, Victor Ostrovsky, revealed in his first tell-all book, The Mossad, uh, there are three major hooks for recruiting people, money, emotion, be it revenge and ideology, or sex. This scenario is played out in virtually every sphere of influence at one degree or another. As it happens, both presidential candidates are connected to sexual scandals, the likes of which we shall explore in Trump's life. Mossad's child sex ring procures Gisling Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. Glisseline Maxwell is the daughter of the late British parliamentarian and media mo magnate uh, Robert Maxwell, also a Jewish Mossad super Saiyan, that means a helper, uh, prior to his assassination on November 5th, 1991. Glisseline Maxwell is not only a personal friend of Bill and Hillary Clinton, but apparently also of Donald Trump. The two have been spotted together on several occasions, although never charged, it was revealed in U.S. courts that Glesleen procured young girls for her Jewish billionaire boyfriend, Jeffrey Epstein, and his friends. So basically what it's telling us here is that they have dirt on Trump. It's just a matter of when they will release it. It kind of begs to wonder why WikiLeaks never came out with anything on Trump, only on Hillary. One might also note that Epstein and Maxwell were repeated guests at Mar-a-Lago. In 2000, they hung out with Prince Andrew, who arrived on vacation on Trump's private plane. That same year, the Palm Beach uh, Post reported that Trump, Epstein, Prince Andrew, and Maxwell were all at a tennis tournament uh, celebrity event at Mar-a-Lago. Bill Clinton is alleged to have ridden in Epstein's plane 10 to 20 times. Uh, let's see, at the very least, Donald Trump must have known that his mini skirt clad child workers was working for his friend Jeffrey Epstein at his mansion a mere 10 miles away from Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. At worst, Trump was helping uh, the Epstein-Maxwell procurement of young disadvantaged girls for sexual blackmail uh, factory. The pair were operated and or Trump was one of Epstein's child sex clients himself. In 2002, while Epstein was using child sex slaves at his various homes in New York, Palm Beach, and the Virgin Islands, keep mind on the Virgin Islands, uh, Trump told New York Times that Epstein, his friend of 15 years, was a terrific guy. Kind of sounds like he speaks about Hillary. He's a lot of fun to be with, Trump continued. Uh, it is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. Did Trump just reveal that he views underage girls as women? It appears so, as there's little doubt that Trump encountered Epstein while with one of the dozens of child sex slaves with whom he trophied around the world with at social gatherings. One might also take note that at uh, Epstein's defense deposition, uh, he stated that uh, the following as to whether Trump was involved in nonstop Epstein orgy. The question, have you ever socialized with Donald Trump in the presence of females under the age of 18? The answer, uh, though I'd like to answer this question, 
at least today, I'm going to have to assert my 5th, 6th, and 14th Amendment rights, sir. This only question being in the presence of underage girls, but Epstein still wouldn't touch it. Clearly, there must be something going on here. Okay, now we'll get into a little bit of the nuts and bolts of this crap. Many people know about the CFR, and some say that they would uh, call it the uh, liberal uh, bank of... Uh, foreign policy uh, because that's what it is council on foreign policy but I think that they really don't have any party lines in my opinion being that you got guys like Henry Kissinger uh, at the forefront of uh, this uh, council on foreign policy but we're going to look at another one that uh, really is kind of new and that's the council for national policy as it turns out, way, Herbert William Hunt, CNP Board of Governors, 1982, multimillionaire, and his brother to Nelson Bunker Hunt in 1981, William Herbert and Nelson Bunker Hunt provided the startup money for the Council on National Policy. These guys are Jewish. Don't let the... Uh, crap about neo-nazi and this kind of stuff fool you on this the council for national policy is subsidiary group of the pro-nazi german american national congress dank that's d-a-n-k what they call it the council is headed by uh carol sitko sitko was the organizer for the west german branch of the West Goals Foundation, a far-right political organization and research group until the death of its founder, Congressman Larry McDonald, was essentially a front for the John Burke Society's private intelligent network. In Germany, Sitko organized rallies in Nuremberg and Hanover, drawing 240,000 people. He was supported by billionaire H.L. Hunt, and General John uh, Singlob. His activities were conducted in concert with the anti-Bolshevik bloc of the nations. Looking at the membership directory for the Council of National Policy, an ultra-secretive conservative group, and Donald Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, and his campaign CEO, Steve Bannon, were listed as members. The directory is for the 2014 and indicates that Conway was a member of the executive committee that year and Bannon was listed as a regular member. The secretive organization was described as wanting to be the conservative version of the Council on Foreign Relations and it is home to a number of individuals with fringe beliefs including WorldNet Daily writer Jerome Corsi, a popular figure in the Obama birther movement. Trump transition team announced Rince Priebus as White House chief of staff. Priebus is about as establishment as it gets. The chairman of the uh, Republican National Committee previously served as RNC general counsel and is the former chairman of the Republican Party of Wisconsin, where he brought nationally known figures such as Paul Ryan, piece of crap, Uh, Speaker of the House, and Scott Walker, Governor of Wisconsin, to national prominence. Priebus is responsible for taming Wisconsin's Tea Party and merging it with the Republican Party, basically meaning that uh, they got infiltrated at that point. The pick signals that Trump may be looking to build bridges in Washington and keep continuity with longtime Republican agenda as opposed to making waves from the beginning. The long-time Republican agendas include never-ending war, manufactured terror, ongoing wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria, and police surveillance here at home. The Trump team, headed by Vice President Mike Pence, also announced Steve Bannon as chief strategist and senior advisor. Bannon is executive chairman to the alt-right news outlet Breitbart, another piece of work. He heads up the group Government Accountability, with Peter Schweitzer, a former William J. Casey, a research fellow at Stanford. Casey was Reagan's director at the CIA and played a key role in arming the Afghan Mujahideen that would later become Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. 
He was the central figure in the Iran-Contra scandal. After earning his master's degree in national security studies at the Jesuit Georgetown University, Bannon served as assistant in the Pentagon. He worked for Goldman Sachs. He used his experience in entertainment industry to produce political propaganda, including films like Face of Evil, Border War, Battle for America, and the Sarah Palin documentary, uh, Undefeated. Okay, now let's take a look at the Jews behind Trump. The first one, Michael Abood, Sephardic Jew, communications coordinator, Donald J. Trump for president, uh, Paul Atchleitner, Ashkenazi Jew, chairman, supervisory board, Deutsche Bank, Trump's largest lender, Miriam Adelson, Ashkenazi Jew, endorser Donald J. Trump for president, future 45 PAC, financial chair, Trump presidential inauguration committee, Sheldon Adelson, Ashkenazi Jew, endorser, John, Donald J. Trump for president, donor, future 45 PAC, financial chair, Trump presidential inauguration committee, uh, Thomas Barack, Jr., Jewish spouse, Roxanne Burrow, donor, Trump Victory Fund, Tr uh, member of Trump Economic Advisory Council, Chairman, Trump Presidential Inauguration Committee, Elliot Broidy, Ashkenazi Jew, Vice Chairman, Trump Victory Committee, Financial Vice Chair, Trump Presidential Inauguration Committee, Michael Cohen, Ashkenazi Jew, Executive Vice President and Special Counsel, the Trump Organization, Gil Deezer, uh, Ashkenazi Jew, President, Trump Deezer Development, and his dad, uh, Michael Deezer, Ashkenazi Jew, founder, Trump Deezer Development, Boris Epstein, Ashkenazi Jew, senior advisor, Donald J. Trump for president, Stephen Feinberg, Ashkenazi Jew, donor, Trump Victory Fund, members, Trump Economic Advisory Council, Alan Fishman, Ashkenazi Jew, Chairman, Ladder Capital, Trump's second largest lender. Okay, this is a big one, so you're going to have to bear with me on this. Uh, Louis Eisenberg, Ashkenazi Jew, Chairman, Trump Victory Committee, uh, Finance, Co-Chairman, Trump Presidential Inaugural Committee. Louis Eisenberg is one of the 9-11 conspirators. Larry Silverstein and his partner Frank Loy acquired a 99-year lease on the entire World Trade Center complex just weeks before 9-11 attack. The deal was negotiated by Louis Eisenberg, former chairman of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Eisenberg was recently appointed chairman of the Republican National Committee. Eisenberg was reassigned from Goldman Sachs in 1980s after a secretary accused him of sexual harass harassing her. The New York, New Jersey Governor Chris Todd Whitman appointed Eisenberg chairman of the Port Authority in February of 1996. This list is way long. I'm not going to go through the whole list. It's really, really long. Trust me. I'll leave a link to it. But there's three guys that I want to uh, uh, talk about real quick. And that would start off with Michael Glasner. Michael Glasner used to work for Louis Eisenberg uh, at, at, in the Port Authority. He helped with the 99-year lease with Frank Lowy and so Larry Silverstein. The second one would be this uh, Secretary of State Tillerson, who actually was w the one lobbying for the Boy Scouts of America to uh, have gays in there so they could have this uh, gay indoctrination for young boys. And then the final one would be uh, the Treasury Secretary pick, Stephen Mnuchin. Uh, he actually is a former employee of George Soros the dirt bag. Well, we know that uh, Trump's been in business, so to speak, with Soros anyway, uh, on some of his buildings in Chicago, particularly. But at any rate, uh, I'm going to leave it off with that. And I'll leave links to all of the show notes. And so you guys, you know, you can actually take this video and upload it 
to your own page or whatever you want to do with it. Uh, all the best and uh, make sure this information gets out. We're in some deep shit, and I'll tell you right now, uh, it's not looking good for uh, the United States or the Middle East, in my opinion, based on all of the studying that I've done with the Oded Yenin plan, that's the Greater Israel Project. I think that's gonna go full steam ahead. Uh, we will be uh, going after Iran, I'm, I'm positive about that. And that's all based on bullshit propaganda as well. So look, folks, uh, all the Arab hate and whatnot, that's all Jewish run. Anyway, so uh, let's just get this information out and try to knock some people in the head and get them to wake up and smell the coffee, huh? Wardo out.